Alright, Party Foul fans, I'm Greg and I'm here with Scott and we're going to be talking about Shifting Stones, Circle Shifting Stones. And this is going to be an important video for if you're a Circle player to learn how the basics of how uh, Shifting Stones work and also if you don't play Circle, what to expect when you're facing Shifting Stones. And that's going to be important because you don't want to be double teleported, assassinated on the bottom of one. That's, that's kind of embarrassing. So I'm going to break this up into uh, a number of uh, sections. The first one I'm going to talk about the stones and their basic ability. Here's a basic unit of stones. Then I'm going to talk about the unit UA and what he does with, to the, uh, the stones. That's the stone keeper here. And then I'm going to talk about basic formations and deploy. Then I'm going to talk about tricks and tips. And then finally, how to use stones defensively. So let's talk about the basic ability of stones. Stones have no melee weapons, no ranged weapons, they don't do anything like that. They're just def 5, armor 14, command 4, and 5 damage boxes apiece. Uh, their command is particularly relevant because if they don't have the UA, you have to keep the stones fairly close. That's probably about the maximum. You can get a little more stretched than that. You can see, there you go. That's the maximum sort of command if this is the, the leader of the, the stones unit. Uh, they're two points apiece. Uh, they have advanced deploy and their constructs. So that's their basic stat line. Uh, they are mobile. That means they can't uh, be... They have no movement or action and cannot be knocked down or moved. Its front arc extends 360 degrees, it has no melee range, cannot engage, and is automatically hit by melee attacks. The important thing to note about that is that the stones themselves can still be placed. And that will be relevant later when I tell you about some of the tricks and stuff like that. Uh, one of their basic things that they do, they don't have to actually do an action to, uh, to do this, but if you have a beast that is within one inch of a stone during uh, your control phase, uh, the stone can use an ability called Serenity, and it can remove one Fury Point. And that can be done for each stone. So if you had three stones and they were all within one inch of that beast, and that beast had three Fury that you wanted to get rid of, so you didn't have to make a Frenzy check, you could get rid of three of that uh, Fury by... Um, uh, by doing one for each of the stones that are involved. So that's Serenity. Serenity is, a, is very situational. Um, I have used it uh, intentionally quite a bit with Ikaya because you usually run really hot on the turn that you use your feet and you bring back those beasts and if you have your you know, shifting stones set up like this you can get rid of that three of that fury really quick and the wilder can get rid of another four and you can manage your fury like that. Um, so these are their, what I'm going to tell you about now is their shifting powers and these you get to do one of during the unit's activation. So you have to pick just one of these things. The first one is Healing Field, and that's similar to Serenity in the fact that a uh, model, this can be used on War Beasts and other models, even other units of Shifting Stones and stuff like that. Um, so when they do their activation, you do Healing Field. Models in this unit that are in formation get to heal D3 damage points. And any other model that is within one inch of a stone in the formation also heals D3 points. So if you had, let's put a couple of workies here, and this guy's a, a UA, he's got boxes, and we got Kruger over here. So if this stone formation, this stone uh, unit activated and did healing field, each of the stones would heal D3. And then each of the war beasts, the UA, and Kruger, if they're damaged, they would all heal D3 as well. Um, Healing is very important. Uh, it also, very, very importantly, it can, they can heal constructs. So if you have a, wo a world uh, or uh, the colossal or something like that, because normally casters can't heal construct, uh, construct war beasts, uh, but with the stones you can do that. So you'll see that an awful lot with, like, say, Morvana, if she's running the, the world. I can't remember what his name is now. The big guy, Mon Magic Monkey. If she's running him, she has no way to heal him unless she has stones. So you'll include a unit of stones to heal her and to heal the big guy. The uh, second ability is shifting. And uh, this is how you move the stones. So when you shift, uh, each model in the unit can be placed within 8 inches of its current location. It's important to know that this is within. That means it doesn't have to be completely within. You can go from, from the front of this base, measure 8 inches, and then place the back of the base there and then do the other ones. So this is how the unit moves, or gets around the battlefield, okay? So that's the second ability, healing field, shifting. Now probably the most important one is teleportation. And this is uh, where you're gonna see the stones do a lot of their really flashy work. Uh, so if all three of the stones 
It's important that you have all three of the stones. You cannot use this ability if one of the stones has been destroyed or removed from play. Uh, if all the stones are information, another model that is within the triangular area of the stones can be placed within eight inches of its current location. So that means that if I have this goat man here, my rip horn satyr, and he is there, you notice know, that he is within the triangular parameter of the three stones. That's sort of like the outside line of that, of that front of the base, that front of the base, and to this side, to this side. When, they act, when the stones activate and do teleportation, I can place the rip horn satyr within eight inches of its current location. And just like the shifting for the stones, that means it's not completely. So I can measure eight inches from the front of his base, place the back of his base at the end of the eight inches. Now, because of the width of the uh, large base model, that can be the equivalent of a 10 and a quarter inch place. Um, so those are the three basic abilities of the stones. Healing field, shifting, teleportation can only do one. Teleportation is only available if you have the three stones. Okay. Um, oh, also another thing I should note, the model that's being teleported uh, must forfeit its movement and cannot gain an aiming bonus because it has to forfeit its movement for the teleportation. Um, so that's it for the basic unit of stones. Now we're going to talk about the stonekeeper, the stone UA, and what he does for the stones. He's a one-point unit attachment, and some of the more important things that he does is the unit can now use his leadership for formations, and his leadership, or his command, I should say, is eight. So that means <clears throat> that all the stones in the unit have to be within eight inches of the keeper. And that means that your formation can now look something redonkulous like that. And you could have any old dude in this triangle get teleported. I could teleport him, I could teleport him, I could teleport him. Some people say you could put a 50-point army in this triangle and be able to teleport any of those models. So that's one of the most important things. It increases the uh, area of that triangle and your ability to teleport. Um, I guess I'll cover right now very quickly that if you lose leadership, like say you're, you had your formation like this, and this is the unit leader, and this is the UA leader, and for some reason the leader is killed or removed from play, you now have stones that are out of formation. Now, when you sh shift, these stones that are out of formation will not be able to shift. They have to stay in place. So you have to shift your unit leader with an 8 to try to get the other two stones back into command so that they can become part of the unit and do the other things again. That's the same thing if you, got, if you have the three stones and the unit leader stone is destroyed, one of them is promoted, and then that one's going to have to shift to get the other one back into its command. So that can get complicated and can be one of the uh, most tragic downfalls if you lose your stone keeper or your um, unit leader stone and it'll throw all your plans awry. Okay, some other, other stuff that the stone keeper does that's really, really cool is it gives the unit stealth. So it gives it some defensive capabilities. I mean, the stones are fairly durable, armor 18, 5 damage boxes. They're probably going to not get killed by regular POW 10 shooting or maybe even POW 12 shooting. Uh, but boosted attacks, that'll take them out for sure. So stealth will give them a modicum of defense. Um, he also has some special abilities of his own. He has stone form. And so when he uses stone form, this is a star action. It gives him plus four armor, reduces his depth to five, and he's automatically hit by melee attacks. That brings his uh, armor up to a stout 17, which is not going to save him from charges, but it will save him from blast damage, which is, you know, with armor 13 and five damage boxes, POW 8 blast damage could kill you. Boosted POW 8 blast damage will totally kill you. If he doesn't use stone form, he's defense uh, 14. Uh, and lastly, he has a magic attack, a star attack called Rock Hammer. It's range 8, AoE 3, POW 14 magic attack, roll it on a critical hit, knocks down. Um, the models hit are knocked down, so that's all the models in the AoE. And it's, also, it's important to note that he can still do his star action or star attack even after the unit shifts. So whatever they do, when they shift, I can place them with an 8. Oops. Like that, I've done my shifting, and now he can do his action or attack. So he can stone form or you can rock hammer. Uh, and that's the uh, Stonekeeper UA, definitely a worthwhile investment if you're going to have stones. Spend the one point, best one point ever spent.
Okay, now we're going to talk about formations and deploy. As I mentioned before, the stones have advanced deploy, and it's important to note that advanced deploy does not always mean deploy as far up the table as you can. Um, so I'm going to set up something here, just to give you a sense. So, uh, I've set these up in the regular deployment zone, and that will be uh, something that you will learn is a good thing to do normally. And if you look over here, I have the other, if I have two units of shifting stones, that's your full uh, FA, your full, uh, what's it called, something allotment? I don't know what it is, four-stork allotment or something like that. You're allowed to have two units of stones. So uh, you will usually put one unit of stones in your deployment zone so that it's capable of shifting a beast or something important forward, and you can do a double teleport. First, I've already explained the teleport, I'll explain the double teleport. Um, so, advanced deployment, you don't always have to put it out in front. You can put one unit of stones deployed with your regular dudes so that you can take advantage of a double teleport. So, double teleport looks something like this. So, say, I'm going to put Geterix here. He's a little more scary. He's got reach and stuff like that. So, double teleport is, uh, I activate this unit of stones. They choose to teleport. They pick Geterix to teleport. He is placed within 8 inches of his current location. I'm just going to cheat this a little bit because I placed that too close. So he goes like this, and now he's within the triangle of the second unit of Shifting Stones. So when this unit of Shifting Stones uh, activates, they can pick Teleport. They can have Geterix teleport another 8 inches, and he can end up there. So you can see, Geterix hasn't even activated yet. This is turn 1, and he's like 24 inches up the table, plus reach. So somebody who's a little reckless with their caster, they can get assassinated that way. It gets even more ridiculous with telekinesis. Important thing to note is that he has to forfeit his movement, so he's not going anywhere, but you can uh, utilize non-movement shenanigans like sprint and warpath. So if you're playing Kruger and you have warpath up, uh, you could teleport Geterix up to there. Uh, did I say Kruger? <laughs> I meant uh, Chromac. Sorry, Chromac. And uh, then you have to, uh, I don't have Chromac here today. This moon out is Chromac. He's got Warpath up. Say he runs up to make sure that Geterix is in his control area. And then another model, something with shooting probably, kills uh, an enemy model within his control area. Because that's important, because it's Warpath. You can now use a Warpath movement to advance Geterix another three inches. And then you could activate Geterix. Oh, you could cast Lightning Strike on him if you wanted to as well. You could activate Geterix, he could kill something really important, and then if he killed something, he could Lightning Strike back six inches. So, that's the double teleport, and also the Geterix turn one assassination if you're really dumb and get far up the field or something like that. So just to uh, recap really quick, Stones activate, teleport Geterix, he's placed within eight inches, of his current location. These stones activate, place Geterix within 8 inches of his current location. Like that. Now Geterix can activate, but he has to forfeit his movement. He beats the hell out of something. You can use non-movement shenanigans to get him different places. So that is the double teleport. You can see how far Geterix gets. Be aware. <laughs> it can be very scary. You can lose on turn 1. Alright, so lastly I'm going to talk about defensive formations. Um, stones, especially when you lose one of the stones, and against a good player, you will lose one of the stones, probably by turn two, turn three. Uh, that doesn't mean that they're completely useless. You can still use Serenity, you can still use Healing Field, and more importantly, you can block charge lanes with them. You can do some trample blocking. You can't drop block a trample lane, but you can block landing places for tramples. Okay, let's do it like this. Okay, so... This is uh, charge uh, blocking, or even slam blocking, if you will. Say so we've activated Kruger, he's done what he needed to do, and he's TK'd this uh, nasty Centurion guy. He's turned him around and moved him two inches away. But the Centurion is still close enough that he can advance and start poking Kruger in the face, and that's really not, not happy times. So we can activate these stones here, and we can set up a, uh, a bit of a defense to see if we can stop that Centurion from poking uh, Kruger in the face. So we can shift this one stone over to here, just over there, shift this one over here, and then shift that one 
there, and hopefully we've got enough distance between Kruger and this stone that the Centurion cannot advance and poke him. I don't know if that's totally accurate, but for a random setup, it's not too bad. It gives you a sense that I can use these stones to get in the way, to prevent the Centurion when he activates and tries to get over here. He's like, ah, oh, I can't poke you, Kruger. You're a dumbass. Ah, oh, I can't poke you, Kruger. Why? Yeah, you don't need a line of sight to trample. Oh. Oh, that's true. Yes. <laughs> he could trample. <laughs> See, we had some other models to place there. <laughs> You're welcome for ruining it. Yeah, I guess he could. Four or seven inches, he could end up right there. Bam! Oh, Ted Kruger. All right. Woo! We'll try that again. Okay. It's the reach that's the problem. <laughs> okay. We'll try that again. We'll see if we have some friends nearby to block some tramples. All right. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Starting again. All right. So we're going to talk about um, uh, trample and charge blocking. It gets a little difficult when you start talking about uh, heavies because they can trample, they can end up in bizarre locations even if you put some models in the way or that type of thing. Um, so say we this, these models have all activated. Kruger, the Stalker, and the Moonhound have all activated. I did my best with whatever I was trying to accomplish to block charge lanes and trample lanes and that type of thing. But there's obviously there's still a clear runway for the Centurion to get onto Kruger. So I can activate the stones and they can get up and get in the way and prevent the Centurion from getting up there. Uh, they're great for that because uh, they're mobile, they can't be slammed away or anything like that. Uh, obviously with a heavy, this could even, he could probably still even get in there. You'd have to like put the stone right there or something because he's got that large base. You gotta make sure there's no landing spots for a trample. Uh, it gets complicated with a heavy with reach uh, because they can get into strange locations and that reach can really re get in there. Um, but the stones are an added element to get in the way, especially if you're dealing with non-reach infantry or non-reach lights that don't have access to, uh, to trample. And of course, they're great at contesting. Once you've lost one of them, you might as well get them over there and contest that zone. They're great for standing right at the edge of it. We don't have a zone set up here or anything like that, but if this was the zone, you just tow the zone and now they have to get that stone out of there and that's going to basically probably take a, an infantry charge or, or a boosted gunshot or something like that. So they're great for that. And that is the shifting stones.